Hello and welcome to Retro Gaming Banter. In the first part of this series, I spent some time cleaning up and fixing any issues with the Amstrad CPC 6128. The issues were mostly cosmetic and after some attention, I now have a clean looking CPC. If you missed the first part, it's linked in the description. In the next part of this short video series, I take a look at some nice upgrades and improvements which you can add and uh, use with your CPC 6128, starting with a GoTech drive. GoTech drives are essentially floppy disk drive emulators. Instead of using physical floppy disks, the disk images are stored on a USB memory stick as files. These images can then be accessed by the GoTech and read and written to just as you would with a real drive. They are compatible with many computers including the Amstrad CPC, Spectrum, MSX, Atari and Amiga series. You can buy a GoTech in a plain plastic case for use with any devices externally or you can buy them without the case and have an internal mount designed for the computer such as uh, this one which I plan to use on an Amiga in a future video. As a note, the Amstrad and Spectrum have different data and power cable requirements. Uh, this is important to remember as connecting the power cable as you normally would will result in 12 volts going into 5 volts and yeah this will potentially damage the GoTech and uh, USB stick. There's two options to resolve this, one is to simply buy a cable adapter which goes between the original cable and a GoTech. I use one of these on my Spectrum Plus 3 so yeah this basically allows you to use any standard GoTech. The other option is a specifically made device which has the correct data and power headers on the board. This allows you to connect it directly to the original cables. On my Amstrad I use this option with Zaxxon's floppy emulator. Uh, yeah, It comes with everything you need including a mount to attach it to your Amstrad or Spectrum. Let's take a closer look at the GoTex. As mentioned, there are some differences in the parts used, but generally they perform the same function. On the front, you have a visual display which will show the status of the GoTex. Some models will have a LCD counter type display and some have an OLED which shows much more detail. There will be a USB port which you can attach a USB memory stick to. Tried up to 32 gigs, which works fine and should be more than enough for most collections as disk images are generally quite small. Next will be some kind of input control. This can be two buttons and or a pushable rotary dial. The Zaxxon uses a dial, uh, my Amiga one uses two buttons and my general GoTech uses both. The buttons can be fiddly to use and it can take a while to navigate when it's installed inside a computer. The rotary dial is much faster to use. The great thing about the GoTech is you can quite easily mod it yourself to add the rotary dial if yours does not have one. It's literally the dial and some wires which cost a few pounds. These connect to the respective jumpers on the bolt. And uh, yeah, likewise, if you want to add a speaker to mimic the disk drive operation noise, all you need is a piezo speaker and some cables to add it yourself. All of my GoTechs use the Flash Floppy software, which is free to download and use. The GoTech will likely have a version pre-installed and it's very easy to update to the latest firmware. You simply copy the update file to the USB stick and uh, plug it back into the USB port and hold down either the two buttons or rotary dial down and then power on the computer. Once you see the notification, release the buttons and it will update to the latest version. It's a, yeah, it's a piece of cake. You can navigate the files on the USB stick with the two buttons or the rotary dial. As you can see the dial is much faster to move between files. Uh, you then select to mount the disk image and you can access it from the attached computer. 
just like a physical disk. There is, however, one other way that you can navigate and load disk images. With Amstrad, Atari and Amiga computers, there is a HXC compatibility mode. This mode allows you to load software onto the computer to access the USB stick. So from here you can navigate the stick and assign file images to slots, which means basically you can add your most used images for faster navigation in the future. Uh, the nice trick here is that you can quickly load any file by pressing the respective software keys to instantly mount that image file. And depending on the system, it will boot straight to it or at least have it ready for use. As this video is aimed more towards the Amstrad, I will show some of the usage on it. Here I am showing the HXC compatibility mode. Unlike the Atari ST for example, the CPC does not automatically boot disks. So you do need to mount an image and then manually run the program. On the CPC you type in cat which shows a list of files and then you load the program. It takes a few seconds to load the HXC floppy emulator manager program. From here you can navigate the contents of the USB stick and add disk images to the slots. I will add a few on here quickly just to show. When you exit the software, you don't have full access to all of the files, only the slots added previously. You can change between the slots with the dial and man an image. And again type cat to see the disk contents and then run the program. As the disk drive emulates a real floppy drive, the access speeds will be the same as at the original speeds. At least it's faster than loading by cassette tape. When not using the HXC compatibility mode, you will have full access to the USB stick and can navigate through the folders and files. Then, as before, simply select an image and it will mount it ready for use. The GoTech has great compatibility with floppy disk images. With the Amstrad at least, I have not run into any issues where using a disk image was an issue. There's probably a few disks not compatible, like they might use um, disk access tricks, but so far I've not come across any. If you have a lot of files on your USB stick, it is overall faster using this way if you're using an Amstrad, Atari or Amiga. Unfortunately, software for other computers are not supported this way. So that's a general overview of the GoTech floppy drive emulator. Personally, I think you should have one on any system that they support. Floppy disks can deteriorate over time and result in corrupted disks. And the drives themselves can suffer from wear and tear, especially the drive belts if not replaced. That wraps up this overview of the GoTech drives. I hope you found it interesting. In the next part of my Amstrad CPC upgrades, I will be checking out the M4 Wi-Fi expansion board, which has all kinds of great features. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.